the Lord praise. Praise God. He is good. He is so good. We had a great weekend this weekend, man. Walleye weekend. Walleye outreach. It was good. It just reminded me of a, a lot of fishing things, uh, fishing stories. Everyone's got one, right? The big one that got away. Well, I have one that I want to share with you. It's, uh, uh, I had a friend that said, you got to get on, in on the action. And I was working over on the west side of the state, and, and he said, you got to get in on the action. The, the salmon are running in the rivers, and you're in a perfect spot, so uh, let's go fly fishing. And I told him, I said, I'd never fly fish before. And he's like, it doesn't matter, I'll, I'll, I'll teach you. And I'm like, well, I'm working over here. Well, we'll go after work. And so anyway, he showed up. It was dark, and we took off, and we went fly fishing. And it was <laughs> by the moonlight. It was the first time fly fishing. It was the first time salmon fishing in the river, and I'm fishing at night. And so it's like, my goodness, you know, I'm not going to catch anything. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not expecting anything to happen. All I was trying to do is keep my, my, uh, my stuff out of the trees, okay? So I'm just trying to cast in the river and keep it out of the trees, and I'm thinking to myself, this is crazy. I don't even know what I'm doing, and I'm here at night, too, on top of that. And then all of a sudden I got a hit and it was a, a big hit. And I was, I started, you know, pulling and, and fighting with it. And he's like, oh no, you got it. You got it. You know, you just don't let any, uh, any of the line loose. Don't let it have him any slack, you know, but you got to play with them and all that. And so I kept, you know, I'm fighting this fish. I'm trying to bring him in. And at the same time, I'm trying to keep my balance from falling, you know, slipping on a muddy bank and falling into the river. And it was giving me a heck of a fight. And finally, I was able to pull this fish in. And it was a real nice salmon. And my friend, who was a really good fisherman, actually said, that's a really, really good, good fish. That's a nice fish. And I was like, wow. You know, I was we had it up. I'm holding it. And he says, that, that's got to be all of 30 pounds. It's got to be more than 30 pounds. That's a big salmon. I'm like, I'm looking at him like, man, you know. And, and I'm holding it about right here, and it's, his tail would be hitting the ground. And I'm thinking, my goodness, you know, this is awesome. I can't wait to take this home and, and show my friends, you know. And, and, uh, and he says, well, you looked at it long enough. It's time to throw it back. I'm like, what? <laughs> I started laughing. I'm like, I, I think, I, I just thought I heard you say, throw him back. And he's like, yeah, that's what I said, throw him back. I'm like, throw him back? Why? He's like, well, this is catch and release area. I'm like, are you kidding me? You took me salmon fishing for the first time, first time fly fishing, first time salmon fishing, and then to top it off at night, like it, this is cruel and unusual punishment to begin with, and you're telling me now to throw it back, and he's like, yeah. And it was like, oh. So I ended up throwing him back, you know, and threw him back, and that was that. And you know what? I just, coming from... You know, this is somewhat, I learned how to, to really kind of fish uh, with dynamite. That's how I first learned, right? And to fish with dynamite, and then it progressed from there. So telling someone to throw it back just didn't, you know, didn't feel right to me. You know, and now looking back, I don't even think that's biblical. I don't think that's big, biblical, catch and release, throwing back, you know. Aren't you glad that Jesus doesn't say, hey, you got to throw them back. You got to throw them back. Yeah, you got to throw them back. They're, they're too dirty. They're too, they're whatever, but you got to throw them back. You know, I'm glad that Jesus doesn't tell us that. And my hope in this message, uh, my hope is to encourage you to get in on the action and start fishing God's way. That's what it really comes down to. And in this series, the scripture is based on 1 Peter 3.15, which says, But in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, that you've given us the ability, the means. And Lord, you haven't le left us alone to go and and uh, catch ourselves, Lord, but you're there with us. So, Lord, we just come against every obstacle, against the devil, Lord. We bind the devil in the name of Jesus, and we pray, Lord, that as we fish uh, in the way you want us to, that we would be successful, and, Lord, it wouldn't be any catch and release in your mighty name, Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now, 
things about Walleye Weekend. Walleye Weekend, there's, there's things that you can catch on Walleye Weekend, right? I just wanted to list a few here, but you can, catch, you can catch walleye if they're running in the river, right? You can catch walleye. And I remember when I was younger and walleye tournament or walleye weekend just began, I was thinking, man, these people are fishing in my fishing hole. You know, Babe Winkleman shows up and he's, he's right there fishing where I want to fish. And it's like, babe, get out of here, you know, and all that stuff. But you can catch walleye in the river. You can also catch a cold, you know, because walleye weekend usually is cold and sometimes it's even snowing. And I remember uh, just uh, trashing a boat that I was in fishing. We capsized and just barely saved everything. And then we were on the side of the river and it was snowing out. It was cold and we had to build a fire and basically do one of those survival moves where you just take off your shirt and all the and stand around the fire and huddle. And who knows what people thought of us when we did that. And, and you can also catch a deal because now the walleye fishing is like second to catching a deal, right? That's right. So now you can catch a deal with all the rummage sales. But here's something that's really worth catching, that anyone can get in on action, and that's you can catch people. You can catch people. You just, you got you to gotta know who to fish with, though. In Mark for chapter 1, verse 14, it says, after John had been put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee and told people the good news of God. He said, the, the time has come and the kingdom of God is near. Change the way you think and act and believe the good news. As he was going along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew. They were throwing a net into the sea because they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, come. Follow me, I will teach you how to catch people instead of fish. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. Now, isn't that cool? We're seeing what's happening here. Jesus is building a team. He's building a team of fishermen, right? And God wants us to fish. And it's not about catch and release either. He, he wants us to really fish. I remember when I got on a team, I was asked to be part of a team. It wasn't the A team, it was the B team, okay? And so there's, I'm friends with a, uh, a person who, who has a, a nice boat, who, who goes all over Lake Michigan, enters all the tournament, tournaments for salmon fishing and all that, all around Lake Michigan, and he's got all these big trophies, he's run all these awards, national recognized fisherman, great captain, and I got to be, I got asked to be on the B team. And what the B team is, is you show up early in the mornings before the tournament and you go out and you find out where all the fish are. And so you find out where all the fish are, what they're biting on, all this stuff. And then you come back in and you just have everything set and ready to go for the A team to come in and just take over. And that's, that's your job on the B team. And it was amazing. I got to learn so much fishing with this captain it just blew me away. We had 19 rods out and 19 lines in the water, and that captain just went up, 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 it, it overlooked the back of the boat up on his bench, and he laid down on his back, and he just put his hat over his head, and he listened. And he could tell us what, what reel had a fish on. He'd say, like, reel number 19, has got, it's got a salmon on. We'll get that in, get that in quick. And amazing, it, it, he was right. I just couldn't believe, you know, wow, you know, this is, I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in the presence of greatness when it comes to fishermen right here. I've been blessed during my life, you know, to be with people that really knew how to fish because I don't. I really don't know how to fish that. I'm not a great fisherman at all, but I've been around some people that really know how to fish. Well, if you know Jesus, that's all you need to know. If you want to catch fish, then you start with knowing Jesus. See, it's, it's about knowing and, and knowing the fishermen who can catch him. Yes. Now, when Jesus went by those guys, Simon, he told them, cast your net. Oh, hey, I, we've been fishing all night, Lord, you know, all this stuff. And, and you know the story. They cast the net. They had the fish. There's so many fish that they pulled in, they almost sunk the boats. And Simon, the fisherman, knew right then and there, He's not worthy to be in the presence of, of the Lord Jesus. But the Lord asked him to be on his team. I want you. 
I want you. And I believe that's what the Lord's telling all of us. I want you to come and be on my team. Come and be on my team. And the thing about fishing with the Lord is it's different than catching fish, okay? When you catch fish, you're reeling fish into, they're basically ultimately going to die, right? You, you, got, you got fish fry coming up, you know, fish fry Friday night coming. But with the Lord, when you reel in people, you're, you're reeling them into life. Yes. And, to, you know, so there's an opposite effect. When you, when you get people in the boat, you're getting them into life and life abundance. The fish that you reel in, they, they have a better life afterwards. Now, when you catch people, you will be hooked for life. You know, just like when I caught that salmon in the river at night. I don't even know how I did it. That's a favor of the Lord right there. And when I caught that salmon, that thing was huge. I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth. I can, bring, I can bring my friend in sometime, and he can tell you the story. But that thing was huge. And it's like, wow, wow, I caught that. That hooked me on fly fishing. But when you lead someone to the Lord, I guarantee you're going to be hooked for life, for fishing for people catching people. And it's not a bad catch. It's not a bad thing. It's not like we're trying to handle people and control people. We're catching them and bringing them into the fullness of life in, in, with Jesus, right? Amen. With Jesus. Now, the best way I've learned to, you know, to catch fish is really to have some kind of action going on. You, you got to have action. You have, they have to see the bait, yeah. And some bait has, you know, it's called action lures, where they actually move and they look real full of life. I think that's the same way with us. When we fish for people, there need, we need to be, we need to have action lures. Action lures. And I tell you what, when I looked around this weekend, we had walleye outreach here. We had a lot of stuff going on. And there was two days I had to work in the morning. And I was just like, I was so, I don't know, I was just like, I can't believe I'm stuck in this and I got to go and work. And I'd hurry up and try to rush through and get back. And I, I you know, I'd get back in the afternoon. But I, every time I came in, I would see the team. And the team would be out there, they're working, they're, they're actually, they're fishing. Everything is, is looking great. I, I didn't have to be here. I didn't have to be here at all. We have a great team. They're not, they're not a B team. They're an A team. And I just want to brag on the Lord about the A team today, if you, if you wouldn't mind. Is that okay with you? And, and so the best way to catch people is with action lures. And we did that. Action speaks louder than words, right? Yeah. And so the first thing is, is uh, I want to share with you the bounce house, the bounce house that we had. We we invested and bought a bounce house uh, this year and we had it out there for a walleye weekend and it really lured a lot of people in. It was bright. It was colorful. It was fun looking. The whole thing. Here's what the Bible says in Luke 18, verse 15. People were also bringing babies to Jesus to have them touch them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And so there's something about really receiving the good news like a, like a child. You know, there's that innocence. There's that, there's that fun. I remember uh, a pastor asked me one time, he's like, Tom, do you, do you know the difference between adult ministry and children's ministry? And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll bite on this. I'm, okay, what, what is the difference? He said, fun. <laughs> fun, that's the difference. <laughs> and so that always stuck in my mind, fun. You know, just having a bounce house, that sounds fun, right? The word bounce. Just say the word bounce. Bounce. Hey, 
you can say like, hey, I'm going to bounce out of here. That, now that's just kind of fun, right? But you bounce, you know, you bounce. That's fun. You know, putting the word bounce and house together, now that's even more appealing, right? You, hey, if, you, if you've ever bounced on a bed, that's what you're thinking about, right? You're thinking about when you're a little kid, you bounced on a bed and you broke that bed. You're thinking, bounce house, wow. I'm going to hit that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Bounce house. That just spells fun right there. It sounds like fun, right? The bounce house was a huge success, and it was awesome. And, and it was just amazing how many people came, and we got to connect with and talk to their parents because the kids were having fun in the bounce house. The kids are having fun. Let's... Let's just watch that video, Libby's uh, video there, Ashton. Hello, I'm Libby, bringing us the memory of God, and this year we had our bounce house going. We had lots and tons of fun and excitement. Every year we we'll have this, and our car smash, we'd love you to join us. All right. There's a little Siler. He, just, he was here all weekend, man. He was, this was his home. And it was just fun. I mean... The kids were there bouncing, and th they just came out for a second, some of the kids. But there, it was a good time. It was a really good time. We, we love to show the love of Jesus to, to kids. We want to show that to families. And, because everyone is a kid at heart, right? Yeah. Now, I know what you're thinking. I want to bounce in that bounce house, right? <laughs> but everyone's a kid at heart. And when you really show that you can have fun as a Christian... And as an adult, guess what? People like to be around that. That's, called, that's why I call it an action lure. It's moving. It's happening. And people are attracted to that. People are attracted to fun. They're not attracted to, you know, doldrum and, and, and you know, no fun. They're attracted to fun, right? It's okay yeah. to have fun as Christians. That's right. It's all right. We encourage it. Well, the next thing is the car smash. The car smash was awesome. It was, it was really good. And this weekend, we watched as people took out their frustrations on a vehicle. And it's fun to watch that, by the way. You get to see people say, you know, and you, you, you hear them, yeah, you're mad. You might as well just hit that. You know, I'll, I'll pay you. I'll pay six hits for, the, for you because you're just upset and all. And you get to hear it all. But from Thursday to Saturday... We smashed a vehicle, or we had let other people smash it. And that vehicle went from a, a Ford Explorer to a Ford Pinto by Saturday. <laughs> With, without the explosion, okay? There was no explosions. But that'd be cool, too. But we raised over $650, and I think that most of that was just one hit at a time. So... Um, I'm going to take a guess that probably over 600 people actually smashed that car this weekend. Amen. You know, I was looking at the, the, the vehicle afterwards, and it was all just, I mean, it's out there in the parking lot. Maybe if you haven't seen it, take a walk over there and look at it. But I was looking at that car, and I, I looked at someone, and I was thinking of a, a real rough place where we, we, we went to church one time. We were out of town, and it was a rough place. And I said, you know, I should take a picture of this car. And here's what I'd say. I'd say, I'd say, you know what? You think your neighborhood's rough? Well, this is our church parking lot. <laughs> and just to let them know, look, you know, the Lord is good everywhere. Every time I see a smashed car, though, it reminds me of this verse. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Amen. Now, you know, we talked to a lot of broken people over the weekend. There's a lot of people that really are hungry for God and they need God. And they just, they haven't really seen that with many Christians, I'm guessing. But they were very open and receptive. Uh, we talked to one lady who her house burnt down just uh, in January and they had to find a place to live and she had a family and everything else. And they finally got a place to live and they're just trying to get their lives back. And she wanted prayer. And, and there was many others that we talked to and connected with, but there's, there's people that are, are just broken and they're broken people. And you know what? Don't be shocked when you start seeing broken and banged up people coming to church. 
Don't be shocked about that. The Lord draws them close to him. Amen. And he wants to save them. So he's going to draw them close to his body, his church, and his people so we can help them. And he wants to help them and restore them, and that's, that's what we do, right? And so we, we want to minister to those with uh, broken hearts, crushed spirits, and all that. And that car out there really reminds us that we're here. We're here to do that. And that's an action lure. People are so frustrated at things that are going on. They need a release. And they need to know that it's okay to do that in the right way. There you go. We supplied it. And we have a video here just showing you the car. And uh, Brian and Braden and Matt were there. Hey, it's been a great weekend. I've seen a lot of people come out uh, smashing this car. Not much left of it. And it's very therapeutic for everyone. It's a great stress reliever. Well, I weekend 2022. Awesome weekend. A lot of great people coming out and smashing the car. Good times. <laughs> so there we go. I mean, it's funny because you, you see you see three guys there. They all have they all have their their weapons or their tools in hand, right? All right. So it was a great time though, and uh, thank you, Brian and, and Braden and Matt and Jim was there too. Thank you so much for taking care of that. I think Ashton was there too, uh, helping out. But we we want to use whatever we can to bring people in and to lure them in if you want to use that. You know, you, whatever the bait looks like, that's what we do. You know, if it takes a hot dog to minister to someone, we're gonna, we're gonna give out a hot dog. If it, if it takes smashing a car to minister to someone, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, a bounce house, whatever it may be, that's what we're gonna do. And we also had games and crafts, and that's the next thing I wanna share with you is the craft table. The craft table was really cool, and when I think of the craft table, and I see the craft table, I thought of this verse, 1 Corinthians 12, 6, it says, God works through different people in different ways, but it is the same God who achieves his purpose through them all. And so let's show that video. Happy Walleye Festival, we're here with the Special Olympics. We got Michaela and Brandon here, and we're making some keys. So there we go. God's given us, all of us, different gifts and talents and personalities. Amen. He's given us all different, different things to use. And uh, the, the young man and the young woman right there, they, they actually, he's a really good swimmer. And she just came off of winning a big race. And so they were rejoicing in that. And, and that was awesome. But, you know, we believe that everyone's a 10 in some area. A ten in some area, but you're not going to find out unless you get involved. Unless you get involved, and after we started talking with them and everything, we we realized and it's not just them. Other people that came along, we got to know them at least enough to, you know, what do they like? What's their hopes? What's their dreams? What, you know, what's their personality like? And we got to find out theirs. And he's a really good swimmer. She's a great runner, and he also loves to worship the Lord. I sat there and talked with him about worshiping the Lord. And he was so excited about that. Brandon was so excited about it that he just lit right up. And he wanted to talk about worshiping the Lord. And he just had this uh, really uh, peaceful spirit about him. But he loved it. But if we wouldn't take the time and sit down with them and, and just go through. And sometimes you've got to give somebody something to do to really pull out what their, what their gift is. What their talent is. And just sitting down and doing a craft, which those crafts, those keys that they were making were awesome. And Matt Foote made those. He made like 54 of them, something like that. Made them all up. And they said Jesus is the key on them. So they got to paint them and all that and, and make the little key rings on there. But uh, Julie and Kate and Ashton also helped out with the cookie contest. 
And, you know, we have champions among us. I think Matt Averill won the, the cookie eating contest for the adults. And so, yep, I, I think it was like a dozen or, or 15 cookies in what, one minute or two minutes? Two minutes. And, uh, you know, that, that's pretty fast, by the way. And so that was happening. So you don't know what kind of talents people have. And so they were there helping. And also Lizzie and Michelle came. And Lizzie came um, Saturday morning. She wanted to come and she wanted to make the team something to eat. And so she's going to make us French toast. And so she, her and her mom were down here in the fellowship hall and they made a bunch of French toast and brought them out, brought it out for us and call us over, come, come and take a look, you know, come and... So I came over to get some and I looked in the pan and to be honest, it did not look good. <laughs> it did not look good. The French toast did not look good. But it was like, well, you know what? The Bible says, eat what's put before you, right? And so I'm like, okay. Uh, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go out in faith that Lizzie knows how to cook this French toast. And I put some on my plate, and I got the syrup on there, and I tasted it, and it was the best French toast I ever had. It was, hey, I'm not saying that either. It was really good French toast. I went back for a second plate after that. It was just really, really good. And it was in a pan like this, this big, and it was all eaten up, right? Everyone ate it, it was all gone. So Lizzie, Lizzie has a talent of cooking. I didn't know that before. It's like, praise God, but we all have gifts and talents, and God wants us to use that to really help him fish. Amen. Help him fish. Another thing was the prayer tent. The prayer tent was really cool. Uh, we had people just come right in the prayer tent and say, I want prayer. We didn't even have to talk to them. There was people that just came in and said, I need prayer for this and this and this, and, and just come right in. And so we got a video of Raul and Angie here I want you to see. Well, thank you, Pastor Tom Wood, for giving us this opportunity to share uh, what's within our hearts. Is that right, Lord? Yes, it is. Uh, I am so glad that we have a chance to say what we experienced these three days here at that and this tent of prayer because we met a lot of people and it is so much fun it is so good that we can speak the word of god and to people that don't know him maybe and some of them do know him but they we all love the lord and we were all willing to go out and just speak the truth about jesus christ and people were so receptive they really love the lord you just have to dig it out of them but they love the lord they know the Lord. You just have to be willing to pray for them, and they're accepting it. Thank it's, you. This is an opportunity for us to really uh, have, uh, to come out of the church and just to let people know that Jesus really loves them, and that the world is willing to uh, give them what they need, but they're missing one important part in their life. That's the spiritual that, that God has given us through His precious Son, Jesus. So, as we have an opportunity, we want to be able to let the people know here in Freeland and, and throughout the community that we're open. We're open to the Word of God and we want people to know that Jesus loves them Amen. and that they're yes. special in God's life and that one day uh, we'll be able to not only be a part of His great plan, of salvation to people, but also to share the Word of God with them because Jesus loves us. And we thank the Lord for the opportunity here at Freedom Assembly to be part of that ministry. God and we're us. all brothers and sisters with one Lord. All right, praise God. So they were working the prayer tent. And just want to, by the way, want to thank some of our sponsors, Ever Built and Home Depot. And no, no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, a good fishing team always has sponsors, right? <laughs> well, thanks, uh, Raul and Angie, for being in the prayer tent. And we also have Matt and Mary, too. Hello! Welcome to the prayer tent! Hi, right, we had a great weekend this weekend. Uh, just some really cool stuff happened. We had a young guy come over here post office looking at the bricks for his grandfather, you know, where the brick 
where his grandfather had been placed over there, and and uh, he was limping around some and quite a bit actually. And uh, went over, talked to him for a few minutes, prayed for healing for his leg, and he was able to um, lift it higher than he had in a long time. And we just blessed him, set him on his way to leave, and the Lord would finish that up. And uh, we had a number of opportunities to uh, reach out to people uh, at the uh, bounce. And over here house, yeah. and invite them to the church yeah. and uh, just uh, just a great time of reaching out to people and showing them the love of Jesus and we believe that uh, this is just the beginning of what God's about to do in the city here in Freeland so we're excited and we're looking forward to seeing some of the testimonies that will come back um, yeah. from the people that we reached out to. Yes, yes. All right, praise God. So yeah. Matt and Mary served in the prayer tent and it just goes back to 1 Corinthians 2, uh, starting with verse 2. It says, For I have determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, in much trembling. And I know when you speak Jesus with people and out in the public and all that stuff, you might feel like that. You might feel, oh, you know, I'm weak or I'm trembling. And you might be a little fearful uh, speaking Jesus. But if you go on... It, Paul says, My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of wisdom, of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but the power of God. Amen. And so th we have the prayer tent there, and we were praying for people to be, some, some of the prayers were praying for them to get a job, praying for them to find a place to live, and some were praying for them to be healed. And we really believe when Jesus says, go out and, and uh, heal the sick, that he's given us authority to do that. Amen. And uh, Matt prayed for uh, us, uh, that man. He shared uh, about his, his leg being healed. And the guy's leg was a whole lot better after Matt got done praying than what it was before. And so that was happening. The Lord was moving and people were getting healed. We got another... Uh, video right here of a person, her name's Kara, who experienced something. And this morning, when I got here, uh, my friend Libby and I were praying with the pastor, and I asked him to pray for my hearing. And the minute that we started praying, the Tweety Bird in my ear lessened so very much that I could understand everybody around me. It was so great. So fabulous be able to hear what people are saying to you and about you. Oh, yeah. God is great. Don't give up. And you know, with, with Kara there, she received that healing, right? When I was praying over her, it wasn't, I didn't have any persuasive words or, you know, uh, I didn't sound like Oral Roberts, you know, when I was praying or anything. I just trusted in the Lord and speaking the truth and praying over her. And right away, she started hearing better. And it was, so, it was so real and so phenomenal to her that she stuck around the rest of the day yes. promoting the car smashing. Yes. She's holding the car smashing sign. So it's really the demonstration of, of the Spirit and power. And so regardless, when you speak Jesus, you may, you may come in fear and trembling when you're speaking Jesus and Him crucified. Even that, you know, what He's done and all that. But... Don't, don't let that get you. Don't worry. Don't, don't let your fear control you. Just still go out and speak Jesus. Speak from experience. Don't, you don't have to be elegant. You don't, you don't have to be sophisticated or very persuasive. All you really got to be is in the right relationship with the Lord to really be able to pray for someone. And guess what? And people get healed. You know, someone asked me one time, I, I just, I just uh, copied what Oral Roberts said. They asked him one time, you know, what happens when you pray for somebody and they don't get healed? I just, I'll just go to the next person and keep praying. Right. I'm trusting the Lord, you know. It's, sometimes I get in the way. But if I just trust in the Lord and, and, and do what he says, you know what? He's going to show up. The Holy Spirit is looking for somebody, people to work with. 
Yes. And when you're out there sharing the love of Jesus, I believe the Holy Spirit says, hey, I can work right here. I can work with this person. I can work with that person. And that's what we were doing. The, the team, I tell you what, it wasn't a B team. It was an A team out there the whole Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Some of the people that came, they took off of work to come and work. And we're here serving the whole day. That's amazing. That's amazing. We have a great team here. Yeah. We have a great team. So don't let what you think hold you back. You know, don't limit yourself. God can work through you. And just like he told his disciples, you, you know, he didn't send them out right away. They had to spend time with him. They spent time with him. That was, that's kind of overlooked in the Gospels. But they spent time. They went everywhere with him. And they spent time, and when the Lord said, okay, it's time for you to fish, he sent them out, and he said, go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near, heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, cast out demons, give as freely as you have received. Just as simple as that. Hey, they weren't, they weren't educated in theology. They didn't graduate from seminary. Don't let that hold you back. That's right. Just stand upon the Word of God. I mean, it's good to have the Word in you enough to where you can quote it at times and remember what the Word says just to remind you, you know what? You're sufficient. God has chosen every single one of you to be ministers of the Gospel. And that's what was happening out there. Thank God it's not all about the pastor. That's right? Right? When I showed up in, in, in the afternoon and I see the team out there, the A team, I'm like, thank God, because it's about Jesus. Amen. They're out there and it's about Jesus. And the last thing I want to share is let your life be the message. Really, that's what's important. Let your life be the message. Colossians 3.16 and 17 says this. Let the message about Christ completely fill your lives while you use all your wisdom to teach and instruct each other with thankful hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. Whatever you say or do should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus as you give thanks to God the Father because of Him. See, let the message of the good news naturally flow from your life. That's what the disciples did, but it really takes knowing who Jesus is. You have to know him. You, if you have a right relationship with him, and you're, you, you, that will flow out of you in such a way that people will be attracted to what God is doing in your life. See, that's the biggest action, Lord. That's the biggest bait there is, is let people see in your life the good news. The good news being in full effect. Just let the action lure be your life in action for Jesus. That's what we want to do. That's, that's what we have to do. So, you know, this summer, get ready. We're going to have neighborhood outreaches. We got all, we, hey, we got a bounce house now, praise God. We got a snow cone machine. We got a grill. We got... We got games, we got crafts, we got all that stuff. But Jesus said there's, there's one thing missing. Pray for the laborers. The laborers. See, we need, we need people that can fish. Fish that want to fish for people. That want to catch people. That's what we need. So get ready. Get ready. And we're also going to have a tent revival. We're going to have a, one of those good old-fashioned tent revivals. So that's, there's going to be different kinds of fishing and different methods, but we're going to use them all, and we're going to use every bait in the, in the tackle box. Yes, all right? It's not about us. It's about Jesus. Amen. So who wants to follow Jesus and, and really be successful in fishing for people? Yes. Who wants to do that? Yes. Let's, let's stand. Let's stand. You know, all it takes is a willing heart. Those guys were already fishing. They dropped their stuff, and they went and they followed Jesus. And they turned the world upside down. We have a team here that knows how to fish, 
And if you're a little leery and you, you don't know really what to do, just come along. We'll, we'll show you. We'll show you how to do it and what to do. And you'll, it'll be so natural, it'll just flow out of your life. But the important thing is, is the relationship with the master fisherman. Okay? And that's Jesus. You got to be right with him if, if you're going to be an action lure that brings people to him. All right? So let's just, let's just close our eyes. You can lift your hands to heaven and, and just ask the Lord, 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 help me. Help me. I want to I fish with you, Lord. So if there's anything in my life, Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would remove it from my life, Lord. Remove any, any, uh, any snags, any hooks, anything that would hinder, Lord, me fishing with you. Lord, we, uh, we just repent of our sin right now in the name of Jesus. We turn from it and we turn to you to follow you. Lord, we want to follow you in fishing for others, Lord. We want to bring people and help bring people into your abundant life, Lord, all the days of our life. We thank you, Jesus, and we praise you that you are the master fisherman. And Lord, we want to work with you uh, for the rest of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody said, Amen. All right, so you can fish and be successful at it and have a good time too. Isn't that, isn't that cool? So go out there and fish with victory and you, who knows what may happen? Who knows what the Lord can do through you? Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.